The journey was from Alice Springs, pretty much in the dead centre of Australia, almost due west to the Indian Ocean. I had this crazy idea that I wanted to be in the deserts of my country. So I headed off across that glorious, magnificent desert and I walked for nine months on my own with my dog and four camels. I went to Alice Springs, I guess, when I was 23 or 24. I didn't have enough money, so against my will almost, I wrote to National Geographic and asked them for sponsorship. But because Geographic was involved, they needed a photographer to document it. My phone rang and it was a fellow named Bob Gilka, who was director of photography at National Geographic. He said, we got a letter from this very interesting woman in Australia and describes this trip she's going to do, and we're thinking of funding her trip. Would you like to be the photographer that we assign to go out and find her five times during her, her journey? And I mean, <laughs> I remember having slightly conflicting responses. One is, this is so cool. I mean, my a National Geographic assignment at 28. Um, my second was a uh, 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 terror because I could barely change the tires in my car, so this idea of suddenly having to not only find this woman in the desert, but figuring out, you know, how am I gonna do this? I wanted to be in that desert alone. It was a completely private and personal gesture. I didn't want anyone else involved. I didn't want anyone particularly to know. Most people have this idea of the desert as being utterly barren and uninteresting. But my memory of it was of such beauty. I thought the outback when I first got out there was incredibly ugly. For me, it was just a backdrop for this gorgeous girl and this exotic journey she was on. I was trying to uh, win her over, because she obviously was not happy about me being there. So I would develop my pictures, I'd bring them out, I got a portable slide projector with like a battery, and I'd set this up on a sheet in the middle of the outback and show her the pictures that I'd shot. The first time I did this, she got so angry at me. She said, you make me look like a goddamn model. You think I'm out here with Ayers Rock as a, as a backdrop? I mean, she was so furious, and here I thought she was gonna love these pictures because she did look gorgeous. I think the thrust of the thing was to do something to be the subject of my own life. So totally the subject of my own life. When I first saw Rick's photographs, I realised the trip being not so much taken from me, but looked at by other people and objectified in that way. At the beginning of the trip, she wanted me there as little as possible. Of course, I wanted to stay as much as possible. The more time I spent with her and the more I cared about her, the more I had the sense of dread. I mean, you know, snakes, the camels could have thrown her, uh, there are crazy people out there, the camels could run off. You won't find a drop of water. It'll be two months travel and a dead straight track through empty desert. It's lucky to get six cars a year along it. I'll be fine. Would it make any difference if I told you I didn't want you to go alone? What do you think? Well, I think you have a problem with people.
You know, I'm sorry, but I'm driving ahead to Aluna and dropping water drums along the track. That's almost a thousand miles out of your way. Yeah, yeah, I know how far it is. Are you sure? Hundred percent. I'll mark the drop points on your map. Okay. Thanks. I was terrified she was going to die out there. I would always look in the rearview mirror of my car and wonder if this was the last memory I would have of her. There were times, obviously, when things went wrong and I was very aware that the desert was very big and I was very small. I thought, this is just ridiculous. I should never have done it. And what the hell am I doing? What do I think I'm doing? I had got into an area that was very dry and I got to a well where there was no water and for the next week, I was just walking with this idea in my head, am I going to die? Am I going to die? Am I going to die? So that combination of a sort of vague sense of disappointment or meaninglessness, plus this anxiety about what was going to happen, kind of just drove me crazy. Almost directly after that is when I met old Mr. Eddie. He just decided that he would travel with me for a while, which was tremendous good luck for me and a great privilege for me. And that kind of changed the focus of the whole thing. I'd sort of transformed, my consciousness changed. It just gave the whole trip a kind of core of meaningfulness. I had never met anybody like Robin. Uh, you know, first of all, emotionally, I was about 19 years old. I was 28, but, you know, every girlfriend I'd had at that point had lasted about a week and then I would get an assignment and leave. So I never worked through anything. We had conversations out there unlike anything I've ever had at that point w w with anybody. One of the times I came out, I was buzzing about some story I'd shot somewhere. And she looked at me and said, when are you going to get here? And I said, Robin, I'm sitting here right now. I thought, oh my God, the woman is like nuts. She said, you know, no, you're not here. She said, you know, you show up with me and you're talking about your cover story for Taiwan and where you're going to leave the car in two weeks when you leave me. You're totally lost in your mind all the time worrying about something that happened or something that's going to happen. And God damn it, if you're going to be here, then be here. It was like one of those moments where someone goes like that to you and you go, you know what, you're right. That ability for her to always be in the moment was one of the things I'd never experienced with anyone before. I gave him a very hard time on that trip, but <laughs> I guess he was smitten, I don't know. Um... One of the other things that made this journey kind of <laughs> challenging is that Robin didn't want to wear clothes a lot. I didn't want to send pictures of this woman who I was falling in love with. Uh, naked back to, you know, guys in suits sitting in, at some office in National Geographic. My loyalties were absolutely to her and not to my career and not to the Geographic. She had this wonderful dog, Diggity. It was the first dog that I ever fell in love with. Diggity became her daughter, slept in the sleeping bag with her, warned her if there were snakes. The ranchers in, uh, in Australia worry that wild dogs called dingoes kill their sheep, and they dropped meat injected with strychnine to kill the dingoes. Dig. Diggity came back 
and started licking Robin and then started crying and moaning and then being in agony and Robin realized that she'd eaten one of these poison baits. Diggity, come here, come here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, girls, spit it out. And she did something that I, I couldn't have done. She uh, took her shotgun and she killed Diggity. And uh, I, I, I couldn't have done it. I, 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 you know, it was an incredible act of love, but I, I couldn't have done it. I would have let Diggity suffer. When Diggity was gone, the whole bottom fell out. And she was going to abandon the whole trip. The whole thing felt empty and sort of pointless. I'm so alone. And we all are. Most of us spend our lives avoiding the things that frighten us. Robin goes towards the things that frighten her. She did the most ultimate test possible, risking her entire life to see what she was made of, if she could survive on her own. Basically putting her life on the line to learn about herself under pressure. There was a huge rainstorm that night, and something just changed between us. I think it was very obvious how much I cared for her. You know, I, I wanted to be with her. The whole trip had this kind of dreamlike quality to it. The outback just became so beautiful to me. But it was like having to see through her eyes. The moment she got to the beach was just so extraordinary. She got to the end of this journey and suddenly there was this infinite expanse of beautiful crystalline water. That sense of accomplishment, relief, excitement, just pure pleasure suddenly being in a place that's wet and beautiful. There's no question that the experience of traveling with Robin, telling the story to the world, and now watching it turn into a feature film, it was the most definitive experience I had in my life. I think it was just my year of uh, growing up, of building a relationship with another human being that I didn't run away from. The pictures now have become something she absolutely loves, which is obviously very satisfying for me. She said, you know, I really resented you at the beginning of the trip, but the whole trip would have been so different if you hadn't been here. The journey was a kind of self-proving. I had to sort of pull together um, these bits of myself and make a kind of competent person. And I think the trip did do that. I emerged from it extremely confident. The point wasn't the camels and it wasn't the desert. Her point is that you're as powerful as you allow yourself to be. You know, whatever it is that is holding you back, just let it go. Do what you want to do and don't let fear inhibit your life. <laughs>